Good morning everyone, welcome to Shadow Tactics Blade of the Shogun. My name is Rooster and these are my second impressions of this game. Uh, which has been released um, almost two weeks ago by now. Um, a free demo is available, so should you uh, want to experience a little bit of the game yourself, then you can certainly do so. Um, the game is a tactical squad based strategy game well not not really a strategy game it's a it's a tactical game where you control a squad of up to five different um, eastern themed warriors um, well warrior is perhaps a bit of a misnomer here but um, we we have a varying squad of, uh, of three different persons and we try to accomplish various missions through stealth and um, sneaking around killing and or not killing different enemies and um, well I thought I would share some of my opinions on the game with you uh, because I have been enjoying the game a lot this is a game that is very reminiscent of, uh, of a couple of games that I've spent a lot of time on in the past um, such as Commandos or Desperados. Uh, Desperados, of course, being a game that is heavily influenced by Commandos. Um, the game definitely uh, is heavily influenced by these games, but by no means is it an unoriginal piece. Um, so let's uh, let's jump into the game. Uh, the game includes 13 missions in total. I have spent about um, 12 hours, I would say, into playing the, uh, playing the game, and I have uh, completed six missions so far. Um, we'll head into the third mission over here. Uh, missions include three different difficult le difficulty levels. I've been playing on normal here. Uh, for people that are not familiar with how a game like this plays, I would definitely recommend you start out on beginner difficulty. And uh, at the point where you uh, where you think this is perhaps a bit too easy, uh, then you can start heading into normal or even hardcore difficulty. Uh, the missions are basically the same over the, dif uh, the difficulty levels, although um, making mistakes is a lot more punishing on the higher difficulties. That's basically the, the main difference. Um, and also, well, Small mistakes can uh, can still lead to a, uh, a valid strategy on lower difficulty settings while they are simply impossible on hardcore and therefore you'll have to uh, try out different uh, a different route perhaps. Um, every single mission also includes a bunch of badges. Uh, every mission so far has had nine, so I imagine every single mission will have them. Uh, one of which is always to complete the mission on hardcore, none of which can be completed on beginner. Uh, but this does, uh, in does introduce um, an amount of replayability for those uh, that are inclined to, uh, to try those things out. Um, I do think I like the system a lot. Um, and one might think that 30 missions is not a lot. Um, I, if we compare this game to, uh, to, for example, Commandos 2, which is a game I've spent countless hours in, uh, that one only really had 10 real missions and then a couple of training and bonus missions uh, in addition. Um, I, I, should, I should mention that these missions are pretty, uh, first of all, pretty hard and also pretty large. Uh, and they grow larger and, of course, harder uh, as you progress through the story. Um, and especially with the addition of these badges, uh, which we'll take a look at later. Um, I do think there's, uh, there's even a decent amount of replayability, especially since um, a lot of these objectives can be accomplished in a lot of different ways. Um, and that can also introduce um, an element of, of challenge for yourself. So uh, without further ado, let's go start out with this mission. Uh, there's there's a, a bit of story going on here. Um, I will try and not spoil any major plot points, so I won't be playing a full mission uh, during this video. Um, small spoilers, perhaps. So if you really care about the story, you may want to switch off now. But um, I will be skipping most of the cutscenes, so most of it will be limited to... Uh, to just in-character banter and, uh, well, without further ado. 
Uh, one minor strike against the game is that loading times can be rather long. Um, I've already preloaded a lot of levels over here, but loading times, as, um, as the loading screen here says, might take up to even a minute or perhaps longer if your, uh, your hard drive isn't all that fast. Um, I'm not sure where these, where these long loading screens come from. Uh, so this was rather quick, uh, but they can be pretty long depending on your computer. So the character we're controlling right now is called Yuki, and we need to make our way to uh, Lugan, who is over here. Um, just to rendezvous and then continue on with the uh, remainder of the mission. So um, the way a game like this works uh, mostly has to do with uh, view cones. So we can select this card over here and um, see what, what his active field of view looks like. So anything within this total cone will be visible to him, so we are out of vision right now as you can see. There is a sm slight little grey area over here which is uh, where the cone would have been where it weren't for these obstacles over here. Um, and there is an inside area where you will always be visible and an outside area where you will be visible if you're standing. So any tall objects in the uh, dark green area will be visible and any object will be visible in the light green area. And as you can also see we are in a snowy area which means that we leave footprints which are uh, visible for, for a little while. So um, if any of these footprints are in the light green area then he will uh, be able to track us down and if we haven't moved beyond that uh, we could be in trouble. So the way we would want to take down this guard is probably by sneaking around, or perhaps we could just chase the abilities that this character here has. Stupid. So we can uh, we can sneak around in the dark green area without uh, without any trouble, and make our way into bushes where we will never be visible unless they are actively looking for us. Coming. And then every character has a, a couple of different abilities. So Yuki over here, uh, for example, has a trap. So we can put down a trap, for example, over here. And try to lure the, uh, the guard over there into our trap by blowing a whistle. Now he will likely come to check where the noise came from, and since we are in the bushes over here, he can't see us unless he's uh, very near the bushes himself. And uh, well, he had to make he had to round the corner over here to uh, to even see us. So we were quite safe over there. Now, uh, one important element of a game like this is always to hide the bodies because uh, if another guard would uh, would come over here and see the buddy uh, then he might sound the alarm and then a lot more guards would be uh, would probably show up um, the entire area could be on alert and we might be in a whole heap of trouble uh, now another and very very central uh, mechanic of games like this is the quick save uh, the game even reminds you of this um, so we can see that it has been three minutes since our last save, so we should probably make one since uh, if something goes wrong, you might just be screwed beyond uh, beyond your further control. Uh, now we might be in trouble here, but let's just uh, see what happens. Because this guard might see our footprints over here. Yeah, the footprints were a little slow to disappear. And I'm not sure that was the most elegant solution, but it worked, so that's okay. Uh, so he saw our footprints, uh, did not yet get enough time to, uh, to see where we actually were. And uh, we quickly disposed of him and uh, hid his body in the bushes. Now, uh, small and agile characters like Yuki can make their way across roofs by using uh, using hooks like here, like here, and that can be useful at times. Uh, let's see what we can do about this guard here. I'm a little curious. You will probably see our footprints if we drop down here. This is 
and then make our way to the bushes. But since since our tracks will have stopped near the near the road, we may be fine here. I'll probably uh, want to keep my knife ready in case he uh, he wants to check the bushes also. All right, and that's him disposed of. Hidden in the bushes. And that should probably do it for the first part, since we can now make our way across the rooftops. You can probably imagine I've uh, I've already done this quite a few times. She's she's really eating herself up over her. Uh, over not making it to the rendezvous on time, but uh, but it's okay. So we can make our way across the rooftops. Yuki is a very agile character, and uh, nobody ever, nobody really ever remembers to look up. So we're we're pretty safe over the rooftops here, even though there's plenty of civilians and guards alike on the streets below. And that brings us to the rendezvous over here. And now we get to uh, to introduce another character, who is um, quite different from Yuki. We can probably skip this for a bit. Um, so now we have our new objective, which is to uh, to steal some documents from the person over here. We can see um, a little indicator over his head, and he's uh, he's guarded by a lot of. Samurai and guards alike over here. Um, plus, we need to make our way inside the walled area where there's uh, not a lot of easy access points. And since our uh, our friend over here, Mugen, uh, is not as agile as uh, as Yuki is, we will uh, we will have to make a way for him to enter the compound. Since he's the only way uh, we can we can beat the samurai that are guarding this person. Uh, now the game also recommends you uh, destroy one of the wooden towers over here to lure the guards away from uh, from the uh, from the highly ranked official here. Um, you could do without that, but that would be quite a challenge indeed. Uh, let's go take a look at what Mugen can do here. Um, we are dealing with a guard that's patrolling over here, but moving over here should be safe, so let's go do that. We'll play a little bit more of this mission and then I'll uh, show off some of the other missions in the game. And uh, talk a bit about the mechanics involved in those. Um, let's make a quick save since we haven't done one in the past form, and it would be a shame to have to do that again. Um, let's see... We can probably... what would be a convenient way to lure this guy in? I'm actually thinking I'm, uh, I'm taking Mugen to the bushes over here. And then show off his uh, sake bottle. Which is one of his special abilities. Mugen carries a sake bottle uh, which he can use to lure a guard closer to him, which then allows you to take him out at, at your leisure. So, this guard over here will spot the bottle of sake on the ground. And then we can sneak in for the kill. Pick him up and hide him in the bushes. There we go. So you can already see a little bit of a difference there, uh, since Mugen is, uh, is a big and strong dude. Uh, he can carry uh, dead bodies or unconscious bodies a lot easier than, than, uh, than you could. Um, but there's also this slight little difference that he carries his bo uh, the bodies of the guards while standing up. Uh, while Yuki has to drag the bodies. So, he's, so she is a lot slower, but she can actually drag the bodies uh, while remaining crouching herself. So that can be helpful in some occasions and can be detrimental in others. Uh, now there's a samurai guarding this uh, this little area over here. 
And that can be rather annoying because samurai uh, cannot be defeated in combat by anyone but Mugen. For duty. Um, there is a way to defeat samurai if, uh, if the mission does not include Mugen, but then two party members will have to team up and things can get kind of complicated in that case. So the samurai is luckily out of vision of everyone, every single guard here, so we can easily take him out by just sneaking up to him and stabbing him with the sword. Onward through the snow. Or the Shogun. Anyone else attempting that would just get killed. Um, so that is uh, another reason that Mugen is really helpful. Um, let's see, we want to lure this guy out. I think Mugen can also help us in that aspect, so let's go look at that. Let's hide him around the corner here and then perhaps lure this guard out with the sake bottle again. So I think if we place the bottle over here, you can't throw the bottle too far or it'll break. Actually, the game doesn't allow you to uh, to break the bottle, but you do have to pick it up uh, in case you uh, throw it. It gets picked up by a guard. Oh, that's actually not enough. Okay, so we should place it a little closer in that case. Excuse me, let me try that again. So this should work. Um, there are other ways to lure guards around, and there's probably plenty of ways to take out this guard without using the sake bowl. Um, but it's the first thing that, that comes to mind, and that should work. Oh, actually, I'm a little worried about this guy seeing me. No, I shouldn't. Okay. So did this not? It did work. All right. None can resist this offer. So with him distracted, we can go pick him up. Um, just for security, I like to hide the bodies in the bushes again, although it's probably not necessary right here. Um, and then we have a bunch of guards over here. One more dude here, whom I don't know what's the best way to take care of him. I'm guessing the sake bottle again, but uh, it's getting a little boring at this point, and I I'm pretty sure I have plenty of other ways of, um, of taking care of him. For example, we could try and use, uh, use the whistle or perhaps the trap. Um, I am a little scared about this patrolling guard moving around. Because he's, uh, well, currently he doesn't see a whole lot, but that could definitely change when he moves over here. There's a lot of a uh, lot of stacked crates over here, which really limits their vision, which is really convenient for us. Actually, he doesn't see a lot at all. Just just a brief little glimpse, and that could be enough to see us kill uh, kill this guard if we don't time our uh, if we don't time our actions correctly. Actually, we can't lure him. We could try and walk through the snow, but that's a little. A little optimistic. I think we're, we're just going to use the sake bottle and just uh, be unoriginal but effective nonetheless. Um, let's also quick save once uh, once Mugen reaches this bush because, as the game kindly reminds me, I should be saving more often. All right. So, for example, I'm a little scared about that guard right now. So let's wait just a little bit. There we go. And actually, let's uh, let's have Yuki take this one out. None can resist this offer. There are non-lethal takedowns in this uh, in this game, and it can be advantageous for you to do so um, if you intend to leave, for example, civilians alive. Um, that mostly has to do with bonus objectives. So you are never uh, never really punished for killing unnecessary civilians, except uh, except when the mission would explicitly forbid you from doing so. We should Let's make sure to pick up the sake bottle. It wouldn't be the first time that, uh, that something like that happened. And then uh, it's time to showcase Mugen's final ability here. Oh, am, am I getting seen? Am I getting seen if I walk over there? 
I am not. Okay, so let's sneak into the bushes here. Hold my footsteps go unnoticed, and then use this big fancy sword to take out three guards all at once. And Mugen, big and strong, burly dude, can also carry two bodies at once and even run while carrying them, so that's really helpful. These uh, these peasants are blissfully unaware of whatever's going, uh, going on around them. And uh, I think, well actually, let's, um, let's go and enter the cart first before we uh, call quits on this mission. This civilian is really, really annoying, so I'm thinking I'm, I'll just knock him out using Yuki here. Yuki can sneak into the bushes over here, I think. Um, usually civilians don't follow, uh, don't follow footsteps, so we're fine in that regard. We may be... Actually, they're behind the bushes, so he can't see those. Right. So we can take to the roof using this hook over here. And then wait in ambush on the roof right here, which uh, should allow us to take him out. Oh, actually, let me remember to... Oh, I missed one. I missed one? Okay. All right, let's try that again. Uh, let's make sure to uh, to switch to non-lethal because I don't like killing civilians. It's mostly uh, mostly a personal preference, as mentioned. So whenever possible, I uh, <laughs> I try to avoid killing civilians, and I think there's actually a bonus objective uh, related to that. Um, if you uh, if you drag civilians inside, there's a big big drag. Uh, <laughs> Dragging track. Is that is that the word? Well, it's uh, it's making a, a big track, but fortunately these uh, these workers are really busy, so they don't notice anything. Uh, which is also kind of a difference uh, between this and traditional commando-like games. Um, in that every character, uh, well except one, um, but that has a good reason, can run without making any sound, which is really convenient. And another uh, another. Another major difference, actually, uh, which uh, which I probably should talk about, is the way uh, the way vision works. Um, first of all, vision cones are really fancy in this game because they do adapt uh, based on high and low cover. And second of all, um, guards actually don't notice low uh, lower objects in their further view cone. So that's really convenient. Uh, that means that if there's a guard standing in the uh, in the further area of uh, of another guard's view cone, so for example, can we can we find one of those? Oh, uh, for example, this guard over here. Um, he's in the view cone of uh, of the samurai over here. So if uh, if I were to personally attack this guard, then uh, then the samurai might notice if he happens to be looking at uh, at this way at the right time. But once this guard goes down, he can no longer see him because a body is close to the floor and uh, there's plenty of crates blocking that. Um, and that is one of the of the biggest annoyances uh, for me personally, at least. Let's uh, let's make a quick save because I tend to forget stuff like that. Um, that guards were were able to spot spot bodies from way beyond where they would see uh, someone lying lying behind a bush, for example. Um, so that's a, that's a big difference, which I, I like to point out. Um, also, the running up to someone, so you don't have to endlessly sneak behind someone to finally take him out. You can just run up to him, um, because we are trained samurai here. Right, um, so our next objective should be to find this cart over here, which is uh, which is traveling back and forth to this area. Uh, we can probably safely hide behind the cart over here. Where is it? I must find a shortcut. And then take the role of stowaways on uh, on the truck. 
let's make sure to be there in time. And I think that's as far as uh, as this mission will go for us. The, the mission is uh, is quite a while, uh, quite a while uh, to go still. There's plenty of stuff left to do. But uh, I'll, I would prefer to uh, to take a look at some of the other missions instead of uh, of spending too long on this one. So you can see uh, if the if the card hurries up a little bit. Um, that would bring us all the way over here, uh, which allows us to uh, to bring Yuki over the roofs into the uh, into the walled area. Then steal the key, open the gate. Uh, we take out the guards outside, and then Mugen can enter, destroy a tower, distract the samurais, and then Yuki can finally steal the keys, and we make our way through to the cart over here, which is our exit strategy. So, uh, quite a way left to go. Uh, and then, after beating the mission for the first time, the bonus objectives unlock, such as um, the objective to kill all the samurai, to not destroy any wooden towers, which means you would have to uh, take care of the samurai guarding the official in some other fashion. Uh, to not kill anyone inside the compound, that's quite a challenge. To uh, This is kind of a funny one, making, making an enemy follow your footprints for 50 meters. That's I could give that a try sometimes, I guess. Uh, to unlock the north gate first, which is probably the standard way to complete the scenario. Uh, but there's also an objective to unlock the south gate first, uh, which could be kind of challenging because the samurai there's two samurai guarding the gate, and Mugen can definitely not take on two samurai at once. Uh, to hide inside the wagon, well, that's um, I think that's the stra standard strategy, but um, perhaps you didn't think of that. So so this uh, this objective is hidden until you've completed the mission once. And then there's uh, completing the mission in under 50 minutes. There's an objective like this for every single mission, I think. So, um, rewards speed, of course. 50 minutes is probably not unreasonable. I think this mission can be done in about 5 to 8 minutes, if done optimally. Uh, but there's definitely time pressure if you're attempting this. And then to complete it on hardcore difficulty. And the main difference for hardcore is that your your characters have less HP, so they can take less hits in case you screw up something. Um, enemies will uh, will notice you a lot quicker. So, for example, uh, we can take Yuki over here, walk into the view cone. He notices us, and then you can see the view cone fill in, and that happens a lot quicker on higher difficulty levels, and a lot slower on easy dif uh, on the beginner difficulty level. So we, we're entirely safe, even though we were kind of spotted. But he wasn't sure, and then we disappeared again. So it was probably just the wind. Um, anyway, that's enough for this mission. Um, I won't bore you with, uh, <laughs> with all of my attempts uh, making my way inside, uh, inside the building here. Um, this, build, this building is, is quite hellish, by the way. There's so many guards over here, and you have to steal the key and then um, make make Mugen's way all, all the way around towards this tower. And then it was, uh, it, it's at least an hour before I complete it from this point, I would say. And a lot of quick saves. Um, anyway, let me show off a couple of extra missions, because um, all the white hair feels rather strange for a game that is supposed to be... Oriental in uh, in Ascension. That's not even a word. Um, well, for a game that's supposed to be Oriental. Um, so another mission I would like to show off uh, a little bit of is uh, this one, uh, which has a decent way to show off teamwork, uh, as well as two different characters, so we can take a little bit of a look at that. Um, and also shows off uh, some of the different ways to complete a mission, which is nice. So let's try and um, attempt this mission over here. Uh, again, I, I won't be doing the entire mission. Um, a lot of the fun of this game is finding different approaches to complete a mission yourself. Um, so I'm not going to spoil that all of that for you. Um, but getting getting a decent idea of uh, of the different the different mechanics at hand here. 
is valuable before making your purchase, I think. So um, the characters we have here uh, are Yuki again, uh, as well as Hayato, the character you actually start out with playing the game, as well as Takuma, uh, who is an old guy, the only character that actually makes noise while, uh, while running because of his back leg. Um, and they have a bunch of different abilities, for example, Takuma here has a sniper, which I accidentally activated, but that's no problem. Um, and we, in this mission here, need to make our way uh, into the big, big mansion over here. Again, again, a Waldorf mansion, which is kind of coincidental, I guess. Uh, but we, we need to make our way inside and kill the, um, the master of the house. Um, who is, again, heavily guarded, but uh, the game does offer us two different ways of taking him out. Um, one being Takuma's sniper rifle. You would need a vantage spot for that, so um, the game suggests this little pagoda over here. Uh, so we would need to clear this place out from any, uh, from any standing guards. As well as luring the master of the house into the open, um, and the game suggests we make use of the dog inside the kennel here. I'm not entirely sure how that would work, but uh, I, I haven't completed the mission in that fashion yet. Another way uh, to kill him is every once in a while he likes to have tea over on this little peninsula. Um, and we can poison the tea. But that would also involve taking care of the guards over here. Uh, plus, of course, making our way inside the compound, um, which is a challenge by itself. Um, so, as you can see, uh, well, first of all, a quite different environment. It's, uh, it's not more pleasing to the eye, in my opinion, but uh, opinions might differ, of course. There's also this, this really big bell here, which I'm not sure what its purpose is. But I'm guessing it involves killing uh, killing the owner of the house in an entirely different manner. Um, anyway, let's uh, let's show off Hayato's abilities a little bit. Um, this guard is kind of annoying, so let's be careful with him. Move like water. We can make our way to the bushes and let's see if we can take out this guard over here. We can probably just hide behind this guy and be safe in the further part of his view code. We could have probably taken him out and you wouldn't even be able to see him. Time for sword work. <sighs> so uh, Hayato is uh, is also a strong character. He can just uh, run... I, can he actually run with... Oh, uh, did I not drop him inside? I definitely should have... I'm a little scared now. Uh, but everything was fine, okay. He thought he saw something, but he didn't. Alright, uh, let's remain hidden in here for now. Um, the way of taking out the second guard here that has been most successful for me is to use Yuki. And this is, this is kind of a cheesy strategy, I feel. Which I've, uh, I've used a lot in the, uh, in the Snowy mission, actually. Which is making use of her uh, of her flute no, to lure over guards. Right. Wake up, little and the nice thing is, you can use the flute up all over again and lure him in closer, and then take him out. Oh, actually, I kind of failed there. So perhaps, perhaps the old guy should be careful and hide in the bushes now, because I'm kind of screwing up here. But that's oh, oh come on. I'm, I'm screwing up big time here, but no, nobody saw that, right? Oh, there we go. Alright, I'm not sure why that took so long. Sometimes uh, sometimes it can be a little hard to uh, to perform the action you intend to perform. For example, when they're in the way. So, um, uh, one example I found on this mission, for example, is if you uh, if you have a body, and you're carrying, uh, carrying around that body, and you're trying to hide it in, inside this house over here, then you might, uh, you might accidentally just hook up to the roof instead because the game likes to uh, likes to think that you intend to do that because the entirety of this uh, of this dotted line over here is considered the action of hook to the roof instead of the door that it's in front of. So that's 
a little awkward at times, but it's something I'll um, I'll happily ignore because the rest of the game has been a lot of fun for me. Um, anyway, thank you for the reminder game. I will definitely quick save again. And um, there's a couple of civilians over here, which I don't like to hurt, but I will if I have no other options. Um, I do think there's plenty of other options available, though. So let's give that a try. Can we... I would like to just sneak along here, because this uh, this villager that I have selected here is uh, is actually uh, really annoying. Quiet. I'm going in. Oh, I thought I would be safe here, but... I actually am. Okay, they they kind of saw me, but then they didn't. So I'm I'm actually okay here. Um, and I would like to take her out in a peaceful fashion. So knocking her out, uh, hiding her inside the building. If a, if a villager gets knocked out, uh, usually. They will, uh, they will, when they wake up, alert a guard. But I found that if you hide them inside a building or very close to a building, that might also work. Uh, then they actually don't, uh, which is really helpful. Um, now I'm a little worried about this guard over here. Can he see us if we knock out this person? He actually cannot, so we might as well in that case. I use my hands. Oh. Be a little careful about where you move, and here, here's the issue I was talking about, which did not screw us up here, but it very well might have. Alright, so we can take to the roof and take out the guard over here in a timely fashion. Let's see... Oh, I'm a little scared about the guard on top of this building, by the way. Uh, we should we should be fine for now, but we definitely want to take him out with the sniper rifle later. Now this civilian is also being a little annoying. Although I think we can just wait for him to head inside the building and then we'll probably be okay. So take out this guard here. Quickly move the body to push his hair. Oh, I did not mean to knock him out, actually. So I should probably still kill him. And then take care of the civilian that is soon to re-emerge. Sweet dreams. Because he would have seen the dead body. Okay, now the dead body is already hidden in the bushes, I think. I do think so. Oh, you can you can actually rotate the camera freely. I, I just uh, <laughs> I'm I'm so accustomed to uh, to the controls in uh, in Commandos and Desperados. Actually, Desperados didn't include a a rotatable camera at all, I believe. Uh, but rotating in in 90 degrees chunks is uh, is so much more convenient. So um, the thing I was wanting to illustrate here is um, is how to deal with multiple guards standing together, which uh, which the game has a really neat system for, and I would like to show that off before we uh, before we end the video. Actually, there's there's one more level that I would also like to show. So so showing off that level, uh, skipping the cutscene here because that's kind of spoilery. Guess he's not Kagesama after all. Indeed. Still. Oh, uh, that's the that's the guard. That's the guard. Whoops! I really needed to take him out with the sniper rifle first. So let's do that. Um, here we go. Oh yes, I have a score to settle. But consider this: if we leave, right, we should be able to do that from here. Support Kagesama. Take our sniper rifle. This one has limited ammunition, uh, of course, since uh, eliminating all of the guards in the level from a safe distance would be rather cheesy. Indeed. So we only have five bullets for this mission, plus a, plus a last one to eliminate the targets, uh, which is not shown here, but the game actually keeps that in account. A hidden firearm. Go next to base. There's also uh, a healthy amount of banter between the character, which is uh, which is lovely. I'm glad you like it. And also the uh, the comments that the characters make when they uh, when they move, uh, they can differ 
based on uh, based on the level you are in, which is a, a nice little detail. So, for example, in the snow level that we uh, that we you visited last uh, last time, Yuki would uh, would constantly make remarks about uh, about leaving footprints and uh, and about how cold it is. So that was that was kind of neat, I think. Uh, and right now she just uses her default. I th I don't think this level includes any um, any unique voiceovers for the characters. Um, so what I was trying to say here is we want Yuki to be up here. Uh, the most efficient way to deal with the trio of guards over here, I have found, is to use Yuki and Hayato in tandem. Uh, this is a little scary, I think. Let's uh, let's use Hayato to distract these guards a little bit, and then hop down and head into the bushes. No noise. All right, I didn't quick save before that, and I definitely should have, but that went well. <laughs> so uh, Hayato can can throw rocks to distract people and make them look the other way. That's really neat. And now we want to. Oh, there's a hint about dealing with the samurai without Mugen being present. So. Um, I, let's, let's actually show that. So we need teamwork to deal with the samurai. There's an example shown here. We, we need to use the firearms, which is our fourth ability here, to stun him and then finish him off with a melee attack. He will only be stunned briefly, so make sure to do that quickly. Samurai at the gate. Hmm. We lack Mugen's power. No matter. Samurai armor does not protect against good strategy. Indeed, it doesn't. Um, so the plan to deal with these two guards is to um, to actually time our attacks efficiently. So for that, we use shadow mode. Uh, we can engage that by pressing shift. I'm using a lot of customized health keys, by the way. You can co pretty much customize everything, and that's really essential in a game like this to be able to uh, to use abilities quickly because everything's in real time. So you need to be able to react quickly, uh, even though planning is a very key element in the game, uh, you definitely need to be quick about stuff. So Yuki will need to take care of this civilian over here, so we'll use, we'll queue up a jump and knockout, uh, that is one action, you can only queue up one action at a time, and then for Hayato we will queue up a shuriken. Oh, that is not the button for sure. Again, thank you. On this guard. And meanwhile, I don't, is this the right time? Let's quick save and try. The, the thing I'm worried about here is the guard over here. I did not mean to walk there. Thank you. That was a little scary. <laughs> Held my breath there. So the thing we're worried about here is uh, is this guard being able to see us take out this guard, uh, as well as the samurai at the gate, who occasionally turns to face us over here. So I'm a little scared about that right now, but I do think we can find a window in which to do this. Now, also, the civilian needs to be in range for Yuki, but I think we may be able to do it right now. Did he, did he sound the alarm yet? We need to be quick, we need to be quicker. I screwed up royally there, and we got seen. So we did hide the body in the, in the bushes, but now Yuki got seen and everything got screwed up. Um, so, let's just reload and try again. <laughs> I, I panicked a little bit there, um, and that occasionally happens. So I was just a little bit too slow in hiding the body in the bushes here, which uh, caused me to get seen, and then all kinds of extra guards start appearing. Can we actually do it right now? I'm a little, little bit too late here. So then from a guardhouse like, like this one, I think this is a guardhouse, uh, there will be extra patrols showing up, everyone will be on alert, and everything will be just terrible. So you really you really want to avoid that. Let's turn on the view cone for this one again, to make sure we're doing this the right way. I think uh, I think our window will be when, when this guy returns. So let's do that. Engage. 
right now, I'll kill this dude. I got hurt by, by something. Who who hurt me? Yeah. I think I actually ran into melee range of the guy I was trying to assault, and he just barely hit me. Or perhaps this uh, this guy got uh, got killed by the shuriken a little bit too slow. Um, in each case, uh, this guy is still knocked out, so I want to dispose of him. I'm I'm not really sure whether dumping unconscious people in wells kills them, but um, this is a lot more convenient than uh, than dragging him all the way back to this house over here. So that uh, that will unfortunately have to do. Um, I'm not really sure whether this counts against your score. I imagine it might, uh, but that's just unfortunate. Um, I'm not going to bother <laughs> with that anymore. Um, now we probably want to bring the old man up, um, because this over here is uh, is one more example of how to deal with uh, with problems in a different fashion. The old man can sur can uh, can crawl surprisingly well. It's actually uh, pretty amazing how he manages to stay low despite his bad leg. Um, can we can we shoot that? I don't think we can. All right, let's. Um, in that case, move over here. Can the samurai see us when we crawl? He can, so we should be careful here. He quickly turns the other way again, and now we can probably take care of this guard. Ooh, that's going to be dangerous, isn't it? Anyway, this might take a while. Um, so let's actually call quits here. Oh, there, there was one thing I was, I did want to show you right here, um, and a great example of environmental things. Uh, it's basically similar to to how it was in Desperados. Occasionally, you can you can see um, objects that you can drop on people. So we can shoot this box here, for example, which uh, takes care of two people at once. Uh, plus. The advantage here is people will think it was an accident, so it's really unfortunate. They just leave the bodies lying over here, which is actually a little strange. But uh, no one will sound the alarm because these people died, so that's uh, really convenient for us. And I think that does allow us to... I, I would like to, to actually kill the samurai here before we call quits, so let's give that a try. Uh, make sure to quick save before doing anything silly. And now I think we can ready. kill this dude before we. No, we cannot. I'm going in. Actually, he did not see us. Did he not see us? Oh, we we were too slow in dropping. We were too slow in dropping the body, and therefore he did sound the alarm. Uh, you'll be quick saving and quick loading a lot when playing this game, as you can probably imagine. Uh, but that's that's why the game gives you a reminder of it. Uh, can we do this in time? This time, no noise. Can we do it in time? Can we do it in time? I'm too slow again. Jutsu. Hey, quiet. Being attacked. Uh, now we're kind of screwed because everyone's carrying guns guns in ancient Japan. So yeah. Oh, uh, that was far from ideal. Let's be a little quicker this time. I do think I've quick saved at an opportune time, so we should be able to do this. But I might just need to get good. That's uh, that's probably the issue here. So turn on this guy's view cone and then no noise. Take out this one. Move like water. Drop him, please. And then I stood up again because I was trying to drop. All right, all right, I'm, I'm doing great here. Thank you for asking. So a, a lot of time in this game will be spent reloading, and that is just the. Um, I'm going in. I did not need to do that. Why did I do that? No. Okay, I'm 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 tilting now. I'm tilting. Let's not do that. Because uh, when you start tilting, everything just goes goes to hell. Can he see him? Yes, he can. So we need to wait for him to move away, and then the samurai will probably catch us if we. Uh, actually, he moves 
to look right now, so we... No, no, I'm going too fast. Alright, we're fine, we're fine. Drop the body, and we're done. Oh, uh, what happened there? Oh, he just noticed the bodies. Or one of the villagers noticed the bodies. Alright, but we're fine, we're, we're hidden, we should be okay. Enjoy the scene. Now just two more guards that I would like to eliminate. One of which we can do uh, with the help of Takuma over here, who has a pet Tanuki. That can help us out. Um, that can help us take out this guard over Go. here. Kuma. He's cute. Is he your friend? <laughs> you could say that. And now if we wait for this guard to resume his usual patrol. I thought I I thought I eliminated this villager. Is he the one making patrols back in Oh it's probably the villager that sounded the alarm and ran to the samurai for protection. Right. So we can lure this guy towards the Tanuki. And then Hayato can take. Down this guy. There we go. Hide him in the bushes. And then he can stop making noise. Alright. So we're calling him, and that should leave us able to take out the samurai here. Alright. Uh, we don't need Yuki for that. We can just sneak into the bushes, I think. Quiet. Let's be careful here. I think the old guy can uh, can shoot the samurai from where he's sitting right now. Don't don't be silly. Don't be silly. This villager is the one. Quiet. Oh, actually, is he the one that keeps walking up to the samurai? Because we could be in trouble then. I might need to to eliminate this villager still, no noise. or at least take care of him. That is more annoying than I thought. Unfortunately, but um, I guess we can take down the samurai on the next rotation. So he looks the other way, we sneak into the bushes here, and then we queue up the action to eliminate the samurai. And we queue up a pistol shot with the old man. Medium range will do. Can we shoot him here? Yes, we can. Uh, did I actually? Yes, I did queue up a pistol shot. So as soon as we climb up with Ayato, where's the where's the villager? I'm a little worried here. Um, please look the other way. Thank you. Um, he's a little slower than I would have liked, but this still worked. Now we can dump the body over here. Yeah. Follow it into the bushes, and we're done. All right, so um, that's all of the guards outside of the um, outside of the mansion's area, and that does give a decent indication, I think, on how this game is supposed to be played. Uh, I would like to show you one more thing before we uh, before we end the video, which is a really a really sweet mechanic uh, in the sixth level, if I remember correctly. Yes, yes, that's Hida Village. Which is a level that um, that is played during night time. Um, so that's kind of interesting. Let's not watch any cutscenes to avoid too many spoilers. Uh, this level also includes the final character, which you haven't seen yet. I'm not, not going to go into too much depth on her. But um, this level does include a really, really interesting mechanic that I would like to show off real quick. Uh, mostly involving what happens to your vision at nighttime. Um, so we have seen that in, uh, in other similar games. Uh, I think Desperados had a couple of nighttime missions. Commandos 2, which I've played a lot of, did have one nighttime mission, uh, which wasn't too terribly involved since it was since it was the very first mission of the game. Uh, 
but this one uh, includes a lot of uh, a lot of light mechanics, which I found really interesting. Uh, also, you can see the uh, the load times do take a lot of time if you haven't loaded the level yet. Uh, <laughs> so that it, that is a strike on on the game, I will admit. But uh, I'm I'm willing to see. Uh, I'm willing to ignore that for, for being a pretty exciting return to a genre we haven't seen any decent games of in the past few years. So um, it's night time, and that means uh, that we are, we're dealing with a, a lot of fires, a lot of torches, and that, um, that does have its influence on Agard's few cones. So as you can see, um, normally a guard would have uh, would have a normal view cone. Can we get a normal view cone here? Yeah, for example, the samurai here, you can see a really small view cone, so that means that you can easily sneak up on people uh, without them seeing you. But, uh, of course, if an area is well lit, then you are... Uh, you're Guaranteed to stand out like a sore thumb, basically. So anything within an area of light is considered um, is considered in vision. So if you uh, if you sneak up on a guard carrying a torch in this mission, which uh, which is really tricky, uh, you will be in vision of another guard, despite being uh, being quite far away, which is a really uh, a really nice way of implementing uh, of implementing night vision in a game like this uh, which i haven't seen before and i was really really impressed with uh, with how the view guns work over here so that is a part that i really like oh actually this guard is an excellent example so there's there's the campfire over here he can see anything that happens within uh, within range of the campfire but behind the campfire things are still blocked uh, so you can only see if, if you're standing up um, this was really elegant, and I really like this one. I won't spoil too much of this mission. Uh, it was one which I also really liked, with some uh, some unique mechanics involving eavesdropping. Um, so, so far, uh, I'm really enjoying my time with this game. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to, to complete a mission, I think, uh, not last night, but the night before, and then... It, was four hours later and two missions later and <laughs> I was like oh my gosh why is it four in the morning um, yeah I, I have been enjoying my time with this game I'm not sure whether I'm the kind of player that really likes to dive into uh, into special objectives uh, I have completed a few of them by accident. I'm not sure whether I will return to doing missions on hard mode or, or, or completing any of the uh, of the really hard objectives, but they do offer uh, offer a decent sense of, uh, of replayability, which is really nice. Um, the one we've already looked at is this one, right? So there's, there's a lot of free uh, replayability here. Um, would definitely recommend if you uh, if you enjoy a more methodical, tactical approach to um, to your games. Um, the price point is a little high, I would definitely recommend picking up it up in a sale. Um, and beyond that, well, there's a lot of content to be had, even though 13 levels may not sound like a lot, it is a lot for a game like this. So um, don't it, don't don't let that keep you away from a game like this. There is there is at least 25 hours of uh, of content playing through the first time, as well as plenty more if you're willing to dive into the bonus objectives. Um, with that, I hope you enjoyed this first look. Uh, I might make a few more videos on this game. I'm not really sure. It uh, kind of depends on uh, on whether I'm willing to uh, to trek through the earlier missions again I'm, I'm not really sure um but we'll see i um i would highly recommend this support the developers um thank you for watching <laughs>